This is Pride East Entertainment. You are watching News Live. Hello and welcome to Talk Time. I have a very, very special guest with me today who needs no introduction at all, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, the former president of India. Welcome to this special show, Dr. Kalam. Thank you, SB. When you visit a frontier region like the Northeast, Dr. Kalam, what thoughts cross your mind? I I'm asking you this question because many feel that the people here belong to the periphery about which the core does not bother much. You know, uh, today evening, answer to your question, today evening, I was in the, what, called, what is called Petkuchi area. Okay. Petkuchi area of Gavati. I was in the campus of uh, a royal group of uh, institution in the midst of gathering of about 1,000 students. It consists of number of high school students around that area. Right. And from the Royal Institute, the engineering students and uh, business management students. You know, when I started interacting, something occurred to the scene brought me very important information, which may be a good answer for you. See, the, many of the students asked me, that is, uh, most of the students asked a question, when when the nation becomes economically developed and great, when the nation economically developed and great. Right. You see, they are concerned with the nation, concerned with the nation. Of course, they, each one of us belongs to a particular state. Absolutely, yeah. But the way they asked uh, that they know if a nation is developed, uh, then that means unless states developed, the nation cannot be developed. So the question revealed to me, that the, the, there is nothing like periphery. No nation, no state can be in the periphery. All our states have to be a main player. Unless every state in the country becomes economically developed, each of the eight northern, northern North East, North Eastern North states has a unique core competence, mm -hmm. either culturally or um, economic entities, mm -hmm. economic and it may be a power resource, it may be, uh, it may be herbal absolutely, uh, system, absolutely, absolutely, or water resources. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. he, that had to be combined mm -hmm. for national development. The all the core competence of the states have to be combined within right. the no. state and beyond. Right, Doctor, uh, do you feel just a slightly different question? Do you feel today, even remotely, that the idea of India? is faced with challenges because of the so many people are demanding separate states people are demanding more autonomy different groups and communities are demanding states and autonomy how do you feel see i believe each state the it starts from the prosperity and the culturally cultural equality the people equal equality everywhere mm -hmm. There is no societal differences. Societal differences and economic inequality normally emanates this type of feeling. We need smaller states, state within the state, this type of... Uh, right. So I personally believe it is essential to uh, any state government when it's in power mm -hmm. and the central government when it's in power they must ensure the economic development and Much the, the, people. And, and the mm -hmm. societal the societal unity mm -hmm. is not disturbed at all. Mm -hmm. That means there should not be inequality in the development of any region. Most of the time, the inequality in the say, economic development, region to region, in a particular state, or the societal differences, differences. So this should be ensured. The elected government the responsibility uniformly mm -hmm. bring the economic prosperity mm -hmm. so, to a total state. 
Absolutely. A slightly different question, uh, Dr. Kalam. Now, India, as also the other parts of the world, are faced with the malaise or threat of terrorism. Now, are you happy today with the use of science and technology in combating terror? Well, science and technology, only one component for, uh, for removing the elimination of the terrorism. I have proposed to the country what is called uh, a, national, a national campaign for eradication of terrorism. I have proposed. In various forms I have proposed. It has got five components. That is the national campaign for eradication of terrorism. Of terrorism. Mm -hmm has got five, in that national campaign, five components are there. Number one, every citizen should have a common citizen identity card. That means a smart card. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, okay. This, this is a very essential so that any other person cannot be moving around. The second one, it is important to have one single intelligent agency at the national level. Uh, this mission mm -hmm. was taken up in 2008 with the National Investigation Agency Act has come. Third one, to remove the poverty and inequality from the nation. There should not be. Right. Know, that's why the India 2020 mission. Fourth thing, speedy trial and justice should be in position. That means separate a uh, court system. Fast track court uh, system. For fast track court mm -hmm. system should be there. Fifth thing, the people should participate. Mm -hmm. The general people have to participate in the mission of NCT mm -hmm. and ensure they keep their surroundings safe, secure, remain vigilant and report, uh, report certain unique events, mm -hmm. unique uh, characteristics. So these are five integral components in your plan, your suggestion, some of which have already been implemented, as you said, the setting up of the National Investigative yeah, Agency. One, one has been, yeah. Absolutely. Dr. Kalam, you still think the youth in this country are restless. Now, my question to you is, what is your prescription to calm the youths of India and to channelize their energy in the right direction? You see, I, it's a unique country, India, because in the democratic setup, we have uh, nearly 50% of our people are youth, young people. The ignited mind of the youth is the most powerful resource on the earth, above the earth, under the earth. Now, how do you, this youth, a uh, youth has got a uh, uh, energy. So, youth can be, their capacity can be fully utilized only giving a national vision. Absolutely. Nas Absolutely. National vision. You know, I have met so far five, five million young people. Five million? Five million. Uh, that was including your presidency years? Including. That okay. is our last, I can say, it's eight years' time. I have met five million people, most of them young fellows, below 70. Now, I find the, they, they are proud of India reaching an economically developed nation and a powerful nation. This is the, this is the, a, a smart nation we have to give a vision. So Absolutely. when I talk about India Vision 2020, they, they, are, they are all with excited it, with it for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And they take a vote, we will do it. Absolutely. Let's hope they do it, Dr. Kalam. We are all hoping that to do it. And you are one of the prime movers of this campaign Vision uh, 2020. We'll talk about it later. Uh, my question is, you know, looking back, I want to hear in your own words, what have been the high point or high points in your presidency? Uh, and also, do you think you had taught something which you could not actually uh, implement or execute? Well, regarding the presidency, the five years, as you put it, high points, I will divide into, in the high points, two aspects. One is nationally, another is internationally. The nationally for India 2020 vision, I was in a position to propagate that idea and it has become ingredient in the minds of all section of the people, the society, including the industry and the academic institution. And I quite often I present to the parliament also. So that's number one. Secondly, a new concept, what is called Pura, providing urban amenities in rural area. That also have been put forth during the mm -hmm. presidency period. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, third is uh, Office of Profit Bill. Absolutely. Office of Profit yep. Bill. Of when, it came, when it came to me for approval, 
first time i have to return to the parliament because i found it needs as per the constitution some certain uh, certain guidelines should be incorporated and uh, parliament uh, they have formed a joint uh, um, jpc joint parliament committee to consider it there was a debate discussion at least people know what absolutely yeah these are the high the, points these are the mm-hmm. high points and something and there is one yeah. more high point is technological the i was in a position to conduct uh, in in rashtrapati bhavan a workshop a conference on uh, nanotechnology and this resulted in the in the uh, in the financial mm-hmm. approval and nanotechnology was pushed similarly that uh, biofuel important side uh, the biofuel mm-hmm. importance also mm-hmm. we pushed it through rashtrapati bhavan so these are the high points and something which you were uh, close that, to your mind but you could not implement no, before that the when during my visit to foreign country yeah. every visit some results have come in for example when i visit to when i addressed and the african parliament with 53 nation i proposed what is called pan african e network that is in pan african e network e network mm-hmm. how to connect 53 countries telemedicine tele education and all the heads of the government can be connected they must have been thrilled with the idea the, that idea was very well received and the government of india they have spent uh, with i Uh, they spend about 100 million dollars they are spending okay at least f- f- and 20 25 nation already connected and uh, by this year end uh, the so that must be really be, satisfying to you because uh, you have been able to contribute in the international scale important. similarly mm-hmm. world knowledge mm-hmm. knowledge platform no no honestly uh, dr kalam do you think the parliamentary democracy in india today is on the right track what is what are your thoughts overall the the state of politics in this country see is a fantastic question because i address in parliament also you know there is no no other way for a, a democracy of a billion people to go for parliamentary parliamentary system parliamentary government parliamentary system uh, but what is essential what is called politics has got two components political politics and development politics political politics normally people to elect as a, a legislative members or a parliament members they have to work and this where development politics a party a will say in 10 years i will make economically developed nation in india another party will say no i will do it to give it 8 years time but the great citizens also we generate now people who elect by party a or party b and the development politics the political people the power have to spend 70% of the time okay 30% mm. of time mm. in the political politics reverse happened mm. that's not good i, that, that's I a said very, in parliament yeah. mm-hmm. that's a very interesting way of putting it yeah development politics mm-hmm. that means the state the economy mm. should be developed that should be given more in a large amount of time by a political system should be mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, you had written at the site of the brahmaputra river had mesmerized you my question to you dr kalam is do you think india or for that matter assam has been able to do justice with the brahmaputra see brahmaputra is a uh, it is a uh, no it has got origin somewhere join some new uh, some rivers more uh, rivers and then it comes a big brahmaputra is a beautiful river full of water that what i remember but uh, what is happening is this is the throughout our nation this problem is there that is maintaining the river its canal system a desilting a deepening continuously making the full when the flood comes you have to contain the water right that means we have to distribute the water to, through canals various reservoirs such type of system should come in a big way and we have to review the system so we have not been second, able to really no, second one second one i visualize brahmaputra as a smart water waterway smart waterway smart waterway mm-hmm. that means there will be number of uh, uh, all the all the banks are reinforced you know all the banks of reinforced so, so that any condition the flood will not overflow and then there will be communication links then the heavy uh, ships will be moving heavy ships it will be a business smart water means business waterway mm-hmm. business waterway dr kalam you are a nuclear scientist my question is do you think nukes are 
necessary really for a country like India or for that matter any other country with a similar economy? Well, for India, if you see the Indian history, last 3000 years, we were eh, only 600 years Indian ruled India. Okay, that means strength of the nation very, very important. Particularly when all around the nation, few of them equipped with a nuclear weapon, we, we have to have minimum defensive requirement. Mm -hmm. But our nuclear doctrine says, we have nuclear, nuclear doctrine says that no first use. Second one for total... De Just a deterrent. De de total disarmament, not disarmament. So whatever we are having is a deterrent. And uh, strength, respect, strength, you know. Now, what do you think, uh, Dr. Kalam, has been India's biggest failure in recent times or in the past decade or so? Well, I don't know whether it's a failure. You see, we have 600,000 villages in our country. And uh, there is 70% uh, of the people, they live there. There should not be any urban-rural uh, divide. You know, urban-rural divide should not be there. It's widening by the day. But it, So what we have to do, so I will say, positively I will say, what is needed is sustained development. Sustained development means I have proposed an idea, what's called Pura. Pura, yeah. Pura providing mm. urban amenities, rural area. For example, Assam should have the total country will have 7,000 Puras. Assam has to have 300 Puras. And each Pura will consist of 20, 30 villages. And you will have physical connectivity, electronic connectivity, and knowledge connectivity so that the economic connectivity will come. Economic connectivity means employment potential. Now, in your book, India 2020, you've talked about India becoming a super... Uh, you know, economically developed. Yeah, economically developed country by 2020, uh, where you are, it will become a knowledge super power and so on. But do you think it is going to happen? Well, it, uh, one of the conditions put there, the GDP, GDP economic growth, 10% yeah. GDP growth. It was growing. Up to last year, it was 9%. Uh, in 2008, it was absolutely, 9%. In 2009, there was a setback because of turbulent economic turbulence elsewhere. We were affected. Still, our GDP was 7.5%. This year, they expect in, a, in a, a 2010, 11, it may go to 9 to 10%. Okay. So, if we maintain 10% GDP growth, then definitely uh, we can achieve the what is our goal. Mm -hmm. of, uh, another 10 years, we can achieve the goal. So, things are more or less on... No, we, we have to work mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. Particularly, the most important there is not the money alone. Uh, is not the money alone or the, some of the resources. Our youth force. With the, that is the biggest USP the of this country. With yeah. the mission, if we can ignite them, I can do it, we can do it, India will do it. That confidence will Absolutely. Come. Now, you, you want to be your talk, whenever you deliver a talk, you are upon to exhort the youth to think differently. And I have no doubt that you are a person who have always thought differently. Now, who has really taught you to think differently? Is there any particular person or a group of people, maybe in your childhood, who have inspired you to think differently? Well, today also there was a question in the, in the royal uh, institutions, royal group of institutions. Right. One, one girl asked me how to achieve your aim, how to achieve what I want. I said the four things you need. Number one, set a goal and uh, and uh, then acquire the knowledge. Third thing is we work hard. Mm -hmm. Fourth thing is perseverance. If all these four, the four are there, four are there in position, definitely you will achieve. Mm -hmm. Now for your question, who was responsible inspiring you? When I was a 10-year boy, fifth class I was studying in my island, Rameshwaram. Right. There was, there was a teacher, she was Brahmani Ayya. One day he went to the blackboard, put a sketch of a bird. Wing, bird. Bird. Bird, tail, wing, mm -hmm. all those things he put. And started explaining. The way he explained, and then the evening he took at the seashore, showed a seagull flying. The way he conducted the class inspired me. Something I have to do with the flight. Then I took physics. Okay. Then I took, uh, yeah the Roy, um, aeronautical engineering. I became a rocket engineer, then space technologies, and so, flying. 
something to do with flying, you know, that uh, he gave me the... So that was the turning point in your life, really? Yes, sir. At the mm -hmm. age of 10, my teacher was responsible, mm -hmm. inspiring me mm -hmm. that something, something you, you should fly in life. We, on one side, we hear this extremely inspiring stories. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I have to ask you this question, Dr. Kalam, corruption in this country, it's the biggest malaise. Mm -hmm. How can people fight corruption? There's a place called Chunjinagiri in Karnataka. I was addressing 56,000 people, young people, a lot of religious leaders, visiting base and political leaders. One girl, she introduced introduce herself and that uh, I am Asindra. I have a question. I want to live in a country where there is no corruption. And Mr. President, can you give me a solution? I told her, if I tell, will you, will you repeat it? Will you follow it? Said, yes, we will follow. The question was, the answer to that, we are a billion people. Okay, billion people. Billion people live in 200 million houses, approximately. Right. Each house got husband and wife, father, mother, and two sons or daughter, or two daughters or son. Now, I asked the audience, how many houses are corrupt out of 200 million houses? No, it varied. I asked religious people, they did not uh, reply me. I asked politicians, they did not reply me. Finally, we arrived at it may be 30 percent, 30 percent. Mm -hmm. That is 60 million houses are corrupt, say. Who are the corrupt there? Who are corrupt? That should be either father, mother or combination. Mm -hmm. Now I put for the youth, youth power, can son or daughter, I asked this girl, in case unfortunately, your father was corrupt. You go tell your father, father. That's that's a very. You know, mm -hmm. when you go and tell, there was a printer of silence. silence. Nobody mm -hmm. talked to me. Then suddenly, you know, children, they said, "Yes, we will do it." Okay. So the fight has to come from within. Yes. Yeah, so fight has to come from within. So actually, the young people must fight. They mm -hmm. can really. And after all, do you agree what I'm saying? Absolutely. Finally, how mm -hmm. a house, a corrupt house. Not every guy. No, no, is certainly not. Certainly not. Certain houses, but young people, they can make a change. Absolutely. Do you feel? Do you agree? I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. Lastly, mm -hmm. Dr. Kalam, what thoughts come to your mind when you go to sleep every night about this country and its people? No, I, I normally I visualize. I visualize anything I want to do. After some time, now it's all I visualize. I visualize. Another 10 years' time, that is by the year 2020, India transforming into the economically developed nation. I also see the billion people smiling. That is your vision every night. On that highly positive note, Dr. Abhijay Abdul Kalam, thank you, thank you very thank much for being in my show. Uh,